This is Modern Mindset, the show where we discuss the psychology and emotions of business and finance. I'm your host, Adam Cox, and joining me today is Carmen McKyle, who is a sales and confidence coach. Is that right? That's correct. Wow, what an introduction. Thank you. Excellent. Tell me about how you got into this line of work. You know, what's your background? What's your story? Give us a bit of information about who you are. Thank you so much. So um, you probably can hear from my voice. It's not English accent. And I'm originally from Sudan. I left Sudan when I was three years old and we migrated, went to Germany. So from Germany, we went, we came here to the UK. I lived in Germany for 17 years. And throughout my time, all this time, I tried to fit in everywhere. So coming from, from Sudan to Germany, from Germany to, to the UK, I tried to fit in. I tried to find out what am I meant to be doing here? What am I supposed to be doing? So I faced a lot of adversities through that. I had no self-confidence at all. So speaking here to you today is really so grateful for this. And I believe there's a lot of people as well listening who also goes through adversities. Maybe they have uh, moved somewhere, um, they've changed jobs and they had to start from zero. So um, all I did was really just um, start start one step, just go one step after the other. Mm. And I was just constantly asking because I knew I'm meant to be doing something, but I did not necessarily know what it is. So um, this intuition, let's call it intuition, uh, led me to actually events management and business. So I was really fascinated about Richard Branson whereas I was at uni. I was studying Richard Branson, Virgin, and I got really interested on in how he runs business, um, very humble, uh, runs 300 companies at a time um, with a shirt and jeans. And I'm like, I could do that. I want to be the female version of Richard Branson. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was I finished university in my last year, whilst every one of my friends and um, and colleagues were really excited to get a graduate job. I was the only one who didn't get excited by it. I thought, no, I, I don't want to be having a job. I want to run my own business. And yeah, um, it led me to go to an event where Richard Branson was speaking uh, a year after. And I got to experience this events industry. So in this specific event, it was in 2011. Um, again, it's just following one step after other, really not, not, not knowing what am I supposed to be doing, just knowing I have something inside of me, had no self-confidence at all, but I knew I did not want to have a job. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be the person that provides impact that does something in the world. So um, yeah, came to this event and during this event, it was in 2011, it was called the National Achievers Congress. I was sitting at the very front and um, because I was, it, it was my last year at uni, I invested, I had no money, but somehow I made it happen to invest in a high-end ticket. So at the time it was 1,200 pounds to sit at the very front, just to get into proximity with Richard Branson because I just wanted to shake hands with him and say, thank you, Richard, because of you, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Um, but this event actually gave me so much more because I was sitting at the front, I looked behind me and I saw 8,000 people getting an, an experience. Um, and it, that really led me to events. That's what I, I said, I want to be that person that provides experiences for people, that feeling that you will never forget. Carmen, just to let you know, I was at that <laughs> event as well. Were you? Yeah, because oh it, God, was, so uh, cool. it was uh, Richard Branson spoke the day after yes, Alan Sugar. Yes. And yes. Alan Sugar, I mean, the difference between these two characters, because uh, they were both being interviewed on mm -hmm. sofas on the stage, and Alan Sugar was gruff and grumpy and, <laughs> yeah. you know, obviously very successful. Yes. Um, and I think someone asked uh, Alan uh, a question. They said, um, you know, is there one bit of advice that could really make a difference in your business? And, and Alan said, well, no, no, I don't think there is. Um, <laughs> And then they asked the same question to Richard. Yes. And he was like, screw it, let's do it. You know? Yes, I remember that. Wow. Was that also your first event? It was. No, I've, I've gone to a few uh, events like that. But you get a particular type of character um, in, um, in in those kind of places where yes. the the energy of entrepreneurs, they, they have a different belief system, I, I feel. And, and it's the... Um, there's nothing that's impossible. It's very, mm. it's kind of like, it's, it's lots of how questions. How can I do it? Exactly. Not can I? And I think there's a different yes. kind of confidence level that is very contagious. Um, so yeah, so continue, continue with this. I just want to let you know that I was in that room at the same it time. It is amazing. And wow, I, it's incredible. Um, so yeah, for me, 
this is where my journey started because really be careful what you're asking for because when I was in that room uh, there was a girl Tony Robbins was speaking there as well and it's the first time for me getting exposed into personal development into Tony Robbins into all this this kind of world and this kind of industry so uh, there was a girl who approached me that I met at the event and she said to me Carmen would you like to uh, share with me the ticket to go to Tony Robbins Adam, I have no idea what said it inside of me, but I just responded straight away, not knowing what I was saying, said to her, somebody's going to pay me to be there. Now, be careful what you ask for, because six months later, I got hired by the same company. And I was actually my first event that I helped logistic wise working behind the scenes organizing was Tony Robbins event. I got paid hotel, <laughs> everything to be there to to contribute to do the logistic part of the UPW pre uh, event of Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. So that's when my journey started because um, I came, I had no experience. Um, I just had a passion. I knew that I wanted to do events. I did a very uh, miserable job at logistics. It wasn't my strengths. Um, so, but the CEOs of the company, they saw something in me. They said to me, we believe in you. We want to promote you. We want you to do sales. Now I responded like any normal um, human being would respond. Hell no, <laughs> I hate sales. I don't think it's for me. I don't like sales and I don't like salespeople. I think salespeople are sleazy. So that was my response. But um, still the CEOs in insisted and they said, no, we think you would be good. Just give it a try. They handed me a book. Um, at the time, it was Tom Hopkins, How mm -hmm. to Master the Art of Selling. And that was my first book in sales that I ever read. Now, because I was very ignorant <laughs> at the time, I just applied what was in the book. I read it in the morning and on the tube and I went on the phones and I applied everything that was in the book. And within three months, I became one of the top performers in the company in sales, having no experience. And whilst going through that journey, I uh, a lot of people came and approached me and asked me, you're really natural at sales, you're really good at sales. And I was thinking, no, I'm not, because I learned how to sell. I think it's it's if you have a product, if you have a service, if you have a message, it's very important if, if you do like sales or not, it doesn't matter, but it's important that you learn the art of persuasion, mm. learn the art of influence in order for you to get out there and create more impact. And um, I made it my obsession to, to study sales, to learn everything about sales. And now I get to teach it out of specifically women and men to learn the art of um, sales and how to attract ideal clients. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think you're, you're right. You know, if you ask 100 people, you know, do you want to be good at sales? You're going to get 99 people to say no. Mm -hmm. If you ask 100 people if you want to be good at influencing people, a hundred people are going to say yes. That's interesting. You know? yeah, so I sometimes it's the way. the words that we kind of associate yes. uh, are either kind of positive or, or negative. So I guess the, the, the two key reasons uh, to have you on the show today, one is talking about confidence, because yes. like you, I was a very nervous, anxious child, teenager. Um, and I think some people have a belief system that your confidence level is somehow genetic. You're born mm. with it. You, you keep it. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give um, someone that maybe lacks confidence, you mm -hmm. know, and, and doesn't believe that they have the ability to do some of the things they want to do? Yes, it's a very good question. So um, to be very honest with you, Adam, when I, w when I was teaching, I'm still teaching sales. Um, the biggest challenge when what people come for me for, because they come for me, they think they come because they want to have sales techniques. But what they really come for is having that confidence because what we really need is really picking up that phone, going out there, speaking to people uh, and, you know, asking that guy out, asking that girl out and just having that confidence. Now, um, you know, I, I believe every, everyone, all of us have got only two decisions to make in life. And um, at the time, because I wasn't confident at all, I had two decisions to make. I could say, OK, I'm going to stay not confident and just live an average life and just uh, take space here on this world, not knowing what I'm going to be doing. Or I'm going to do whatever it takes to stretch myself to find out. And I think this is that stretching, just putting myself in this uncomfortable situations that make it comfortable to be uncomfortable, to um, yeah, experience and really live life to the fullest, really creating influence, impact and income, doing what I love and helping other people to do so. So what I would advise people to actually really um, do is if you find sometimes 
for me, this is what helped me. I'm going to share with you personally what helped me. At the time, I didn't believe in myself. I had a mentor, the, the CEOs of that company, they believed in me. So I had to borrow their belief in me until I started believing in myself. So I would recommend if there's anyone around you right now, just one person who loves you, just one person who says you're great, just one person who says you, you have something special, believe them. Take that belief until you work on yourself. And I would say stretch yourself because you are here for a reason. You have only two decisions to make. The one decision is, uh, is based on fear and another decision is based on love. So always know that you only always have two decisions to make. Make the choice of loving yourself and stretching yourself. And yes, you will get rejected. Yes, you will get no's. But this is where your strength comes in because when you can face this and can still be saying, yes, I'm good, yes, I'm okay, that's when you can experience true freedom, true fulfillment, and that's when things start to happen. Mm. Yeah, I couldn't agree more about the the, the concept of stretching. And, And for those people that don't really get the concept, it's that we all have a comfort zone. And while you're in that comfort zone, Um, Yes, you're comfortable, but you lack growth. Mm. Um, And the key thing really is to do something that you've never done before uh, is definitely outside of your comfort zone. And therefore, when when you are outside that comfort zone, not only and there's a weird thing that happens, you know, you'll know this as someone that regularly, you know, kind of goes outside of your comfort zone. When you do go out the comfort zone, you don't just get increased confidence and, and kind of abilities in that area it kind of expands in every part of your life. Absolutely. So you kind of get lots of confidence in lots of different areas. Yes. um, Which is a fascinating thing. Now, you do workshops. Yes. Not on goal setting, but on goal getting. Yes. What's what's the difference? (laughs) Tell us what the difference is. Thank you so much for asking. So, yeah, um, my known workshops are Learn the Art of Persuasion, How to Attract Ideal Clients. The very new workshop is the first time I launched it literally last week. Um, It's called Learn the Art of Goal Getting. So it really came, it was born out of frustration, this workshop, because um, I was personally frustrated every year, setting myself New Year's goals, setting myself New Year's resolutions, and um, always trying to find, okay, at the end of the year, I feel more frustrated than at the beginning of the year. At the end of the year, I feel more regrets that I haven't done the things that I set myself out to do. For example, majority of people put on their list, stopping smoking, getting fitter, finding an ideal partner, travel more, create more income, uh, start a business. So I had these common things in my list as well. But what I found is that um, w- through studying high performers, through, through working in proximity with thought leaders, with world-class leaders, I found that there's very few people in this world who are actually, and that's the high achievers, there's very few people who are actually able to not only get goals and achieve goals, but also maintain them and sustain them. So for example, a lot of people can go out and make lots of money, right? But very few are able to actually invest that money and grow that money. A lot of people can go out and attract a man or woman, but very few are able to maintain that relationship and grow that relationship to something beautiful. So I asked these questions and it was literally, it's not long time ago, it was four months ago, but it's been an obsession for me since seven years, constantly wanting to grow, studying people but since the past four months i committed myself to my personal challenging myself okay i'm going to really make this the best year of my life and i'm going to help a lot of people with me along the way so i created this workshop called learn the art of goal getting and it is focused on getting results it is focused on really finding out what are your what are your top goals and how do we get there don't set goals because nobody wants to set goals if you set something it's set but we want to get it we want to maintain it and there's also a tony robbins speaks about this a lot there's something about art of achievement yes we can achieve something but there's a way to achieve it it's an art of fulfillment it's um i know we have we're living now in this hustle culture and especially in london everybody's just go 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 do 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 but there's a way to do things there's a way to uh get things and that i believe in flow I believe that if we work on ourselves, if we have the right foundations where it all actually starts, we can, instead of us pushing, we can actually start things, letting things come to us. So uh, this workshop was born literally last week. <laughs> Since then, my attendees, we, I, I have given them a seven days goal getter action plan challenge. 
and within two days of this challenge already we had manifestations of people who had dreams of becoming a speaker for a long time they already got speaking gigs we've got people who already got TEDx speaking gigs we've got people who increased their income we've got people who are who are now confident in their body we've got people who feel good in their body where they always looked at them self-image in a in a wrong way and the manifestation keeps happening and that's only within two days after the action action plan challenge so yeah it's working <laughs> i'm so what, looking forward to do it again <laughs> what, what would you say is the, is the is the key difference then between because um one of the key things that you know very early on when i started mm. learning about um let's say personal development and goal setting and my, one of my first books i ever read was the magic of thinking big oh cool you know oh. and it was kind of like well if you're going to set a goal set a big one because yes you're going to get much more uh, motivation, enthusiasm, and more resources from yourself if you set something really, you know, inspiring for you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the key thing is write down your goals because mm -hmm. most people, I would say, um, they just keep all of their goals in their head. That they're, they're not particularly inspiring and Absolutely. they're not written down and they lack a plan to actually achieve them as well. So what, what would you say are the major mistakes in your mm -hmm. experience that people make when it comes to knowing what they want and going after it i love this question thank you the biggest one the biggest epidemic right now in this world is clarity right now with our phone as much as we love technology we love our phone we are distracted we are bombarded and that gives us an overwhelm to actually really identifying what is it that we really want because a lot of times we set goals a lot of people set goals. That's the biggest challenge that I found in my workshop as well. A lot of people set goals that are not their goals. Their goals that has been given to them. Their goals that are expectations of their family, of their friends, of the environment around them. But in order for us to get real, real true with ourselves is really get the clarity. And by doing so, I would strongly recommend that's why I'm doing this workshop because it's getting it. You don't have to do my workshop, but just get into an environment that really emerges you into actually shut down the outside nose and uh, nose shut down the outside world put the phone down um, get into a couple of days really um, identifying asking yourself the questions what is it that I really want cleansing yourself doing whatever it takes eating healthy food uh, drinking lots of water and then from that place creating goals that's when we have more clarity that's when we actually can find out okay I, we're asking the questions why do I want this goal? Why do you really want this goal? Is it coming from you or is it coming from somebody who set it out for you? So I recommend getting clarity, getting creating that space that gives you clarity. Maybe shutting down your phone would be very helpful. Um, the second step would be immerse yourself in an environment that supports you, in an, in an inspiring environment. Go somewhere new, go to a new coffee shop, go to a new city, book yourself a hotel by yourself. Just go to the sea, go to nature. Immerse yourself in an environment that supports you, that inspires you to really dream bigger, have a bigger vision. And in that, in the, the third step, I would say is get accountability. Like the reason why my people are getting results now is because I'm on their case. I literally let them every single day send me videos, send me pictures, um, giving them homework, what to do. So get accountability. If you can get one person that really is on your case at the beginning just to get you kicked off, because after a while, when you see results, you're going to be motivated by yourself. But at the beginning, you will feel resistance. As much as excited you're going to feel, you will feel resistance. So during that time get yourself support so yeah and uh, sometimes people get carried away with goal setting and they yeah. they they kind of in my experience and I've, I've been guilty of this the first time <laughs> I wrote down my goals I had ridiculous things that, that I put on there and and yes they inspired me I got a lot of you know motivation from that mm -hmm. but is there an element of people um, occasionally put too many goals down you know and kind of almost become overwhelmed because you can't mm -hmm. focus on everything simultaneously. So how do people prioritize their, their goals once they set them? Absolutely. So there's um, uh, something that I teach um, also. I think it's it's the original quote is from T. Harv Eker is how you do anything is how you do everything. So what most people do is because they have these goals at the beginning of the year, they get so excited and straight on Monday, they completely change their whole life. And after two days, they, they go back to old habits. So the, the way that you can change it is don't try to change everything everything at the same time so uh, what I would suggest and what I would strongly recommend what I do with my uh, workshop attendees is focus on only your top three goals so I would ask yourself the question 
What are the top three goals this year that you've been putting every year on the side, but it's been on your mind. You know, if you were to do this this year, it's going to make it the best year of your life yet. Just three. I don't want more. Just three goals and get very specific. So from there, that's a start. And then a lot of people say a lot of people actually start uh, by setting their goals and describing everything in specific. I would say describe your goals. The first thing that you want to start with is how do you want to feel? Mm. How do you want to feel when you achieve this goal? For example, if you are uh, looking to become healthier and fitter and have a stronger body, how do you want to feel? A lot of people want to feel sexy. A lot of people want to feel fit. A, a lot of people want to look themselves naked in the mirror and say, I love what I'm seeing. So if that's how you want to feel, write this down because that feeling is what's going to get you excited. And that's and from there, you can you can shape around your specific goal. Mm. So getting very specific, only putting three goals and because you're going to see a lot of you're, you're putting your energy into this, you're going to see results there. Automatically, all the other areas in your life are going to have this ripple effect. But for now, for the first three months, only focus on the first three goals. Thank you so much. You've been a, a fantastic guest. So thank you for joining me on the show. And to you at home, thanks for joining me on Modern Mindset. I've been Adam Cox in association with Share Radio. Join me again next week for more.